Hi, uh, I haven't done this for a while. It's Vaughan in Nova Scotia and it's uh, Saturday about two o'clock in the afternoon I think and like everybody else we're all in isolation. It's uh, I think it's about the 22nd or 23rd of March. So we've been sort of self-isolating now for about six days. Um, like everybody else and the whole world is trying to figure out what you know how to connect um, in a period of isolation so I thought I might start doing these again um, maybe this will be an every day or an every week I don't know yet um, I've been just finishing teaching my classes we have classes in the winter and um, so I did those and they just finished just before the isolation started basically so I got a few things left in the kilns to distribute to them um, <coughs> Anyway, we're not so badly off down, you know, we went for a beach walk this morning because we live on the south shore of Nova Scotia in Canada, and uh, so it's not so bad. I hope all you guys are feeling healthy too, um, and wash your hands, and uh, all the rest of that stuff we're being told every day, and all that, and um, before you know it, we'll be looking back at this, and it was just a... Bit of a bit awkward, a bit difficult, but you know we all will all get over it. Just be safe. All right. So this is about five pounds of clay, uh, maybe four pounds. And it's all recycled. Um, I basically showed a video previously of recycling this clay. It's got grit, grog, um, floor sweepings, uh, salt pellets, all sorts in it. I don't de-air it when I pug it. Uh, but um, it's basically my floor sweepings clay. So I, I mostly throw planters, but I'm going to throw some vases. So um, here we go. All right. So it's hard clay because it's been recycled so many times. So it's a little difficult to center. It's a bit stiffer than I hoped it would be, but it's workable. And like any kind of clay that you don't know about, a good idea to push it around a bit first just to kind of get the feel of it see if there's any lumps in it it's quite short so it cracks easily if you stretch it too much if I wanted to get rid of that I could really throw in some ball clay and that would help yeah this is my crack clay basically so I just deal with whatever it is if it doesn't feel too good I'll just end up making a bunch of planters. I'd like to see whether I can get a vase out of it. I got 300 pounds of it to work with so that's not too hard. So this is a Shimpo Whisper I'm throwing on. I bought it because it does actually you know run silent, run deep you know so uh, it's good for videos. I have a Brent next door to this one, which I've had for 40 years nearly. So and that's a lovely wheel. It's uh, been a real workhorse. I would recommend that wheel. Trouble is, it's noisy now. The brushes on the electric motor make a noise, and what can you expect 40 years on? So my joints make a noise too. So. Okay, so let's give it a bit of a lift. Now I compress on the outside more than on the inside, and there's my first stone that I can feel on the inside there. So I'll try and get that out when I feel it on my next lift. I'm not kidding, salt gets in here for my you know the winter time. <coughs> and it blows out sometimes if it's salt, especially or vaporized in the kiln. So I can find it. I'll pull it out. There it is. I'm not going to stop right at that point, but I think I can go back and find it. Right there. It's about there. You can do a lot of. Oh, there it is. I could probably push it right through. I 
think I got it. It wasn't that big. I can just get rid of that hole. There it is. Go right out. Where'd that hole go? There it is. Push some clay back in there. As long as you don't get water too much in the hole, you know, the clay will just stick in there. Now I'll finish that pool going up. Yeah, when we do classes in the winter, I always ask my students to wear studio shoes instead of the boots they bring in from outside. Just because of all the stuff that gets left on the floors and then when we sweep and clean the studio, it will end up in the actual recycling buckets. That's where the hole was and I didn't feel much at all. I can just feel a little ripple where it was. Keep the top a little narrow and compress the rim right as you pull to the top there. Especially since the clay is quite short. And you can know when you're recycling, you could be I could be recycling clay here that's been through the pug mill several times. Because the clay from these will eventually get trimmed and then those trimmings will end up in the recycling bucket again. And every time you throw clay, the water dissolves the smaller particles of the clay and they kind of get washed away. So the clay tends to get a little shorter each time. There we go. Pull that in again. This will be my last vertical pull. So I'm going to get a belly out of this one. So when you start a pull, it's good to finish the pull right at the top of the pot and not stop in the middle, which is what I did to find that stone. So whenever you do, it's nice to keep it lubricated. So I dribbled water over the entire vase and it's still at the top. It's not so much on the bottom because I've already drawn my fingers over that area, but, but you're chasing that slippery wet spot at the top of the piece, always above your fingers. And you stop right at the top. There you go. Yeah, it's nice not to have the TV on. I've been watching the TV probably like everybody else. We don't get uh, regular TV. We actually watch everything on YouTube. So I know it's a few hours later than everybody else, but it is the same news every day. So nice just to turn it off and it's quiet. If I open the window, you'll hear my five seagulls and crows on the outside of the building. They're waiting. I fed them once this morning already, but they're never ending. They love food. But uh, the crows are very suspicious of me. I fed them for years. But the seagulls will come right up. I even had one used to eat off my plate. I would hold in my hand. It's like having big chickens. All right, so all the pulls done. And now I'm going to try and get some width. Let's close up the top just a touch. I don't want to get it too narrow. The inside, it's a good idea. Whenever you do a pull like, I mean, if you're going to form it, you don't want your hand to stick anywhere. So there's a bunch of water in the bottom of this pot. So I'm just going to suck it up into the sponge and bring the sponge all the way from the bottom to the top. So it's evening out the moisture on the inside of the wall, all the way up from the bottom to the top, so that there's no dry spot, then a wet spot. It's just even. There we go. So when I pull now, or not pull, but push out with my inner finger, it won't stick to the wall and suddenly kind of dent it out of shape. Because if your fingers stick to the clay, it will pull it out of shape. Now just my fingertips are touching really only my middle finger on the inside. Here's another stone I could hear in the clay because the wall's really thin now. So, and there's the hollow where I took out the stone. You can see it now because the wall is so thin. Okay. 
All right, let's take a look at it. That's the spot where I took the stuff. I can throw a bit of clay in there later on, just to fill in any little hollow area. The rib can kind of smooth a bit in too. If you just kind of angle it just the right point there, you can actually smooth it. So it may not need filling in. I'm gonna narrow the neck a little bit now. So make a line. Once again, you don't want your fingers to stick on this part now. So wet it out, and then using your fingertips, gently push in. Never do too much of when you do it. Just put enough pressure on so you can definitely see that it narrows, but you're not actually putting so much on that the piece is deforming. And I took all the water off down the bottom so that it's not getting any softer. Now, how narrow do you want a neck of a pitcher or a vase? I mean, that uh, depends on what you're going to put in it. I like to see flowers have like a, a vertical kind of shape as they come out of a vase. But some people would like it to be very wide. And so you can decide that when you make your own. I'm going for a narrower one. You can't put as many flowers in, but it holds the stems tight at the neck of the vase so that whatever display you put in will stay where you put it. I'm putting a bit of pressure on there because it's thicker at that point. That way I can bring out the top, keep my finger on to compress the clay at the rim. You can tell if the clay is going to grab you because you start to feel a little bit of friction. So you've got to judge that just through experience. You can go in a little further. Do keep the rim sort of compressed. This clay is quite short, so I'm getting away with a lot here. Okay, I think it's a decent shape. I've left a lump of clay at the bottom so I can turn it upside down easily when I'm trimming it. I think I'll go with a mark there though to kind of finish off that shoulder and just give it that little extra ring. <coughs> and uh, that's not too bad. Floor sweepings. I spent 14 hours recycling the clay if I remember right, it was back in uh, February, I think I did that. Um, and um, I did an hourly cost assessment for me, myself just to see if it was really worth it. And I was getting minimum wage, you know, so it's not a way of making a living really, but I didn't have to throw it away, um, which is, and clay is expensive in Nova Scotia, so um, because we have to ship it here. There is no manufacturer locally. And you can dig up earthenware clay, but this is stoneware. Alrighty, so does it need anything? I suppose I could do a little decoration. Let's kind of make it go around a little slower. Just to give myself some textural stuff on the top there. And obviously you dent it out of shape a little bit if you do that, so run your fingers underneath again to push that up. That'll just catch the glaze a little bit when it's fired in the kiln. And there's some rough stuff on top which I won't try removing now, it'll just smudge it in. So um, it'd be good just to pull that off later on. And, um, all right, okay. Well, it hasn't it, uh, been a fun time in our lives, but um, I'm sure we're all going to get together online and in different ways and make this a, a part of our lives that actually won't be so bad when it's all over. And hopefully if we all take all the precautions they're telling us and um, 
we can all cook a lot more better food. I mean, there's plenty of food in the stores around here. So I think the panic buying elsewhere has maybe made a bit of a shortage, but, um, but that'll be replenished because, you know, the suppliers have got lots of food. So um, I guess we all have to learn to cook and um, do all sorts of other things. I'm going to learn how to play the guitar, which is really difficult. I tried it. And I, it's a memory thing, I guess, but uh, I think I've got about three or four chords that I can remember at the moment. But, but if we all try something new and different, go out for some nice walks when the weather warms up, or even now just dress warm, um, I think we'll get through this. Be optimistic. All right. So uh, my name is Vaughan Smith. Um, I'm in the South Shore or on the South Shore of Nova Scotia. Um, if you look for Bridgewater, if you look at a map, at Halifax and then Bridgewater as you go west and then a little south of Bridgewater is La Have, famous for a bakery that's right here uh, and it's the first settlement that the French in North America occupied uh, about 400 years ago um, so uh, so it's it's got some history to it here look at these bats it wouldn't it doesn't want to come off there you go all right well thank you very much for watching and we'll touch base again maybe even as soon as tomorrow